Greetings, fellow redeemed in Christ. Thank you for joining me for this daily reading of the large catechism. Today, we will be taking a look at the second commandment, and I'm going to be dividing this up uh, into two parts, so two days worth of, of the second commandment. Our um, psalmody for today uh, is Psalm 3. We will, I'll be reading Psalm 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, There is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. This is the word of the Lord. We turn our attention now to the second commandment. The first commandment instructs our heart toward God. It deals with our relationship with God. This commandment, the second commandment, guides our lips. Using God's name to cover up lies or to spread falsehoods is an evil, a great evil in God's eyes, and it really happens in many ways. There is no greater sin against the second commandment than using God's name to preach teach or to spread false teachings in, about God. Luther explains how, the, how to use God's name properly and how to take an oath without sin. By faith our hearts and our mouths honor God by confessing him and his word purely. Notice how Luther recommends beginning and ending each day and each meal by making the sign of the Holy Cross and commending ourselves to God. Making the sign of the cross should not be identified with any particular church body, but it has its roots in the earliest years of the Christian church. It is a visible way to remind ourselves that we are baptized, that we belong to Christ, and we have been redeemed by his cross. Let us turn our attention now to the second commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The first commandment has instructed the heart and taught the faith. This commandment now leads us toward and directs the mouth and the tongue to God. For the first things that spring from the heart and show themselves are words. See Matthew 12, 34. I have taught above how, how to answer the question, what does it mean to have a God? Now you must simply learn to understand the meaning of this commandment and all the commandments and to apply it to yourself. If someone now asks, how do you understand the second commandment or what is meant by taking God's name in vain or misusing God's name? Answer briefly in this way. It means misusing God's name when we call upon the Lord God, no matter how, in order to deceive or do wrong of any kind. Therefore, this commandment makes this point. God's name must be appealed to God's name must not be appealed to falsely or taken upon the lips, while the heart knows well enough or should know that the truth of the matter is different. This is what happens with people who take oaths in court, where one side lies against the other. For God's name cannot be misused worse than for the support of falsehood and deceit. Let this remain the exact German and simplest meaning of this commandment. From this, everyone can easily see when and in how many ways God's name is misused, although it is impossible to list all its misuses. But to explain this in, in a few words, all misuse of the divine name happens first in worldly business and in matters that concern money, possessions, and honor. 
This applies publicly in court, in the market, or everywhere else. People make false oaths in God's name or pledge their souls in any matter. This is especially common in marriage affairs, where two go and secretly get engaged to one another and afterward break their engagement. But the greatest abuse occurs in spiritual matters. These have to do with the conscience, when false preachers rise up and offer their lying vanities as God's word. See Jonah chapter 2 verse 8. Look, all, the, all this is dressing up oneself with God's name, or making a pretty show, or claiming to be right. This is true where it happens in common worldly business or in higher refined matters of faith and doctrine. Blasphemers also belong with the liars. I mean, not just most ordinary blasphemers, well known to everyone, who disgrace God's name without fear. These are not for us to, dis to discipline, but for the hangman. I also mean those who publicly disgrace the truth and God's word and hand it over to the devil. There is now no need to speak about this further. Here, then, let us learn and take to heart the great importance of this commandment. Then, with all diligence, we may guard against and dread every misuse of the holy name as the greatest sin that can be committed outwardly. For to lie and to deceive is in itself a great sin, but, each, but such a sin gets even worse when we try to justify our lie and seek to conform, confirm it by calling on God's name and using his name as a cloak for shame. See 1 Peter 2.16 So that from a single lie a double lie results. No, many lies. For this reason too, God has added a solemn threat to this commandment. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. See Exodus 27. This means that this, sh this sin shall not be pardoned for anyone or go unpunished. For just as he will not fail to avenge if anyone turns his heart from him, so he also not so he will also not let his name be used to dress up a lie. How unfortunately this sin is a common plague in all the world. There are so many people who do not use God's name for purposes of lying and all wickedness in contrast to those who trust in God alone with their heart. By nature we all have within us this beautiful virtue that whoever has committed a wrong would like to cover it up and adorn his disgrace so that no one may see it or know it. No one is so bold as to boast to all the world of the wickedness he has done. All wish to act by stealth and without anyone being aware of what they do. So if anyone is caught sinning, God's name is dragged into the affair and must make the wickedness look like godliness and the shame like honor. This is the common way of the world which has covered all lands like a great flood. So we get what we seek and deserve our reward. Epidemics, wars, famines, raging fires, floods, wayward wives, children, servants, and all sorts of filth. Where else should, we, should so much misery come from? It is still a great misery, excuse me, it is still a great mercy that the earth bears and supports us. See Numbers 16, 28 through 50. Therefore, above all things, our young people should have this second commandment most earnestly pressed upon them. See Deuteronomy 6, 7. They should be trained to hold this and the first commandment in high regard. And whenever they sin, we must at once be after them with a rod. See Proverbs 13, 24. We must hold the commandment before them and constantly teach it so that we bring them up not only with punishment but also in reverence and fear of God. See Ephesians 6, 4. Now you understand what it means to take God's name in vain. In sum, it means A. To use his name simply for purposes of falsehood. B. To assert God's name's to assert in God's name something that is not true, or C, to curse, swear, 
summon the devil, and, in short, to practice whatever wickedness one may. And so there you have it, the second commandment. Um, that's only half of, of the large catechism. We'll read the, the second half uh, next time. Uh, but it talks about using God's name in vain, how we misuse God's name, how the world misuses God's name. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at how we might be able to use it properly next time. So I hope you join me for that. Uh, let us uh, conclude our devotion uh, by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. And until next time, the Lord be with you.